Hey, Space Lab, Michael from Vsauce here to answer your questions about outer space from last week. Our first one comes from Draxadelic, who asked about the gravity assist maneuver, the way you can slingshot yourself around giant heavenly bodies and gain a lot of speed. This is how the Apollo 13 astronauts got back to Earth, and it's how Voyager rocketed itself out of our solar system. But how does it work. I mean, where does that speed come from? Well, one of the neat things about our moon or giant planets is that they not only have big, strong gravitational fields that will accelerate you towards them, they also are moving relative to the sun. So if Jupiter's gravitational field is pulling me toward Jupiter, I will catch up with Jupiter's speed relative to the sun. And if I'm going fast enough, rather than simply falling into Jupiter, I will actually slingshot around it with my original speed added to the speed of Jupiter. But according to the law of the conservation of energy, that extra speed I got can't just have come from nowhere. In fact, I stole it from Jupiter. That's right, I might be small, but my spin around Jupiter took away a amount of speed from Jupiter that we might not be able to measure, but we can certainly calculate. 14 Civid asked if an asteroid were hurtling toward Earth, what would we do about it? Well, right now what we're trying to do is detect and catalog all NEOs, near Earth objects, greater than one kilometer across. The reason for that is that an object that big hitting Earth would probably lead to human extinction. But let's talk about Eros. Eros is a giant asteroid, 21 by 8 by 8 miles across. Many people believe Eros is larger than the meteor that wiped out the dinosaurs. The reason I bring Eros up is that it's the one asteroid we've landed on. So technically, a procedure of landing on and then blowing up an asteroid with bombs or nuclear weapons into smaller pieces that burn up on our atmosphere could save humanity. Another technique would involve simply detonating explosives near the asteroid, nudging its trajectory in a different direction. Or kinetic impact. This would be us crashing some other object into the asteroid to push it out of the way and keep us safe. Now it's time to answer last week's most thumbed up question, which I'm obligated to answer. Bubblecup18 asked, what if space is just an atom or a cell in some larger organism? Yeah, see, this is the old, what if our whole universe is just an atom in the thumbnail of a giant kind of question? And when you think about it, you start to ask other questions like, well, <laughs> the way an atom is structured, the way the electrons surround the nucleus, how different is that really from the way the planets orbit around the sun? There is one super important difference, the forces involved. Of the four fundamental forces in our universe, two of them keep the nucleus and its constituent parts together. They're called the strong and the weak force. But over distances larger than an atom, they mean almost nothing. That is where electromagnetism and gravity come into play. But it's fun to imagine an organism, a giant, so large that what is electromagnetism and gravity to us are the strong and weak force to it. Or imagine it this way, our universe is expanding. So what if we're actually some sort of parasite taking over this giant that we're a part of? Pretty crazy to think about, but keep the questions coming. Leave them in the comments below or as a comment response, and I will answer them in two weeks. In the week in between, I'll be releasing space playlists that I'll host just like the leanbacks I do on Vsauce. It'll be really exciting. I can't wait to see your questions or video responses. And as always, thanks for watching.